Hello, viewers, and welcome to a podcast discussing the reveal of the new Xbox Series X. My name's Alan, and I'm joined today by Kevin. Hello. And we're going to talk a bit about our initial surprise, I think. I mean, so uh, just to talk about them, we've had the the uh, the Games Awards uh, this week uh, on the early hours of the morning, and we had the reveal of the Xbox, which came as a bit of surprise to everybody. I think that traditionally you'd have expected Microsoft to have had a special event or shown it at the more recent Microsoft event in London. Uh, and instead they showed it as a trailer sort of mixed in with hundreds of other game reveals and trailers and everything else that's been sort of covering the internet over the past couple of days. Sort of almost made it, I don't know, it sort of reduced the impact. It to did, an extent. yeah. I mean, things like this traditionally are left at the end, sort of real drop the mic moment. And they kind of done it near the beginning. And like you say, they, they revealed premiere after premiere and it's it just sort of lost its impact, didn't it? It's a very unusual way of doing things, very sort of low key, wasn't it? It is. I think the I think it's all right, like, like we say, it's sort of low key, sort of slightly nondescript really, and you know, like the box itself. And I just feel that uh, <laughs> the um, it's been a strange sort of process with Microsoft. Uh, they've been a sort of rebuilding company to this point. And I suppose on seeing the box my immediate impression was that of disappointment, actually, in terms of the visual look of the box, uh, because it is literally just a box. And they've said, right, you know, we start off with, we need to put a fan on it for cooling, right? And we need a hole to put the discs in, right? And that's it. That's, it. that's what you get. Nothing else. There's nothing else on there, just the on-off button. Uh, and it's, so it's in terms of inspiring design, it doesn't inspire me. It's it's uh, there's no color or vision. There's nothing that says to you 2020 box of futuristic technology. There's nothing necessarily exciting. There's nothing in design that sometimes you know you can do shapes or materials you can use to make it seem different and give a bit of style to it. There's yeah, nothing I mean, like that. You don't have to do much, do you? If you look at the original PS4, it just had that sort of slanted front. There wasn't an awful lot going on with it. It was still pretty wedge shaped, wasn't it? But it had some lines to it. It had a little bit of, uh, you know, some interesting elements to it. Whereas this is is just like a a very flat rectangle, essentially. Yeah, I mean, I I likened it to a black bin, which I put a picture of uh, online, and it and I just did a search for square black bin. Uh, and it, it it turned out in the pictures it looks almost identical except you had the foot thing which opened the lid but other than that um you could put an xbox logo on it and it looks mm. the same i have a a jet black pc that i use for video editing it's identical it's uh completely well it's not it's identical it's got a really nice brush metal texture it has some texture has some design has some vents but it's pure pure black coloring because i, I don't care about lights and all that i care about insulation silent running practicality uh, and so i appreciate the design aesthetic behind having a object like that which is nondescript and that's exactly what it is nondescript it doesn't but in terms of game consoles i do think culturally uh, design is a part of the culture of the system and i feel that we've reached this point with microsoft because they've lost their way over the past few years and I think that they've they're trying to rediscover their strengths to an to a point. And where is strength in Microsoft is in developing good hardware. Uh, and I think in terms of the internals, it's going to be tip top. But I think everything else, it just always concerns me in terms of where they're getting their advice and where they're going in terms of direction. And one of those things is, you know, when you sit down, you design something like this. You, you the marketing people will talk about how it should be designed, who are they marketing to, what are the core age group. I think we talked a bit about it. It is an expensive piece of kit. They're talking about bringing in a low-end SKU and a high-end SKU, and this is meant to be the higher end. So one would assume this is for adults because it sure as hell won't appeal to kids. No. If you look at Fortnite, for example, <clears throat> Minecraft, yeah, massive brands on the Xbox, you know, it, this isn't necessarily going to appeal to them. They're going to get it out of the box. Yay, it's a black box thing. That, mm -hmm. You know, people are complaining already that it doesn't fit next door to their TV or under their TV because yep. of the shape and design of it. So in terms of design practicality, it's practical in terms of the hardware itself. Uh, but I do feel that they've, they've lost their way in terms of design. Um, 
what were your initial impressions, Kevin? Yeah, it's it's very efficient, isn't it? it it's going for the sort of uh, function over form. It's it's very bland. You know, I mean, we're talking about features. The biggest feature in terms of a visual element is actually the very top of the box. You have some sort of ventilation. It's some sort of uh, curved top and it has like a nice green light on it i mean bearing in mind that no matter whether you put this vertically or horizontally which is it's able to do you know you're not going to really see that element very much are you it's either going to be at the top that you're not going to see if it's in a cabinet or it's going to be to the side and and it's like the most interesting feature is often not going to be prominent so i thought that was a very uh, strange decision if you're going to put a nice fancy green light surely it should be on the front face Mm. you know make it look cool and like you say it's it's just not going to appeal to kids no it remains to be seen whether they have like you say um you know i mean the actual name series x suggests it's going to be more than one console and that was has been rumored for some time now so it remains to be seen if they have uh, a second console that's perhaps a little more child friendly if you like you know because obviously it's a huge part of their market it's 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 a very grown up ex- aesthetic. It's very simple. It's very functional. It's very, um, I don't know. It, it's it's it, it's probably not as tall as you think because when you look at the actual picture next to the controller, it's a roughly mm. sort of I don't know, maybe three controllers, two and a half controllers tall, if you yeah. like. It's so a small it's, form factor PC, basically. Yeah, it's it very is small. It is a small it, sort of uh, mini tower, I guess, but. I can understand what they're going for. They're, 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 they're trying to appeal to the, the older gamer, the more serious gamer with this design. I can understand it, but I just worry that, you know, it's not going to inspire those to buy this. If PlayStation come out with something that looks amazing mm. and you ask kids or young adults, you know, which one do you want? Often we're going to be, we're going to gravitate to the one that looks the best. Yeah. I mean, you know, in terms it, of stylizing and appeal, I think you have to look at it, it'll appeal to a certain type of market. It's minimalist design, but for me, it's uninspired. Now, when, yeah. I, when I look at Microsoft, we have to look at some people. It's amazing how quick people quickly jump to conclusions and say, oh, you're a Sony fanboy. You're anti-Microsoft. I, actually, I'm not Sony fanboy. I'm not anti-Microsoft. I like everything. It's just the fact that I can see that when I highlight the direction they've gone in, and I don't think it's the right direction, uh, but if we just look at history for a moment, I, I, when we go back to the late 90s and Bill Gates was saying, you know, Microsoft are going to bring out this console, there wasn't much. People weren't that enthusiastic about Windows. They saw them as a giant corporation. Uh, they weren't keen on what Microsoft were going to do. Uh, there, there was a lot of negativity around. And I suppose people then saw this big, ugly big xbox you know weighed a ton massive controller and it wasn't that inspiring and i remember going to i remember going to uh, e3 in 2001 and discussing with microsoft then uh distributing the console in the uk and that's part of that and there was lots of negotiations that went on and i came back to the uk afterwards and i tried to get people interested and people were not interested they said no we want to distribute playstation i said look i know that there's not much positivity around it right now but this is microsoft this is windows one of the biggest companies in the world they won't let it fail they'll put enormous amounts of money behind it it's it's going to work and there was nothing really inspiring and i remember going to the launch at the time and they showed project gotham racing and halo and uh, something else and i can't remember what the other games were and it was you know it was okay they were fun it wasn't until you got it at home that you realized actually this console is great it's really powerful the online features were, were a step ahead of anyone the controller though it was fat uh, actually was really playable especially for driving games and it was great for the western market you realize just how few controllers are made for the western market even though other consoles do make marginally bigger controllers for this market this was a proper man size allen size uh, and it, it did well but it still felt that because of the big shape of the box it was very corporate jlr came in in 2000 and whatever 2003 really in terms of moving forward with what the next xbox was going to be 2004 it launched in 2005 and it had this nice interesting shape it had the blade system with the colors it had a face plate that you could change you would go into game shops 
and there would be hundreds of faceplates of all your favorite games, films, everything. You could culturally, you could make that that Xbox 360 yours, and you could find games where you wanted to find them. It was a really gaming environment, and this really took Microsoft forward. It was amazing. Everything to me was Xbox 360. Everything I loved the console, brilliant. For, you know, PlayStation One, Xbox 360, two of my favorite consoles. Then we got to the reveal, I guess 2012, wasn't it? The reveal of, of the Xbox One. TV, 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 if everybody remembers. Yeah. Uh, all this about TV. It was a regressive design. A big, ugly box that looked like a video VHS player from the early 80s. It was a horrible design. Big, ugly thing. Not only that, but it was poorly designed internally. The graphics were substandard. The performance was below expectations. And in fact, to prove the point, uh, Forza Motorsport 5 was downgraded from the first version to the second version to the version we, we eventually played. And I remember playing Forza Motorsport 5 at Gamescom in 2013, only to see the final version had lighting and texture and detail reductions on it. It didn't run as well. So it was a shame to see that, that step backwards. They didn't do anything right they lost their way with the menu system they lost their way by talking about tv they lost their way in terms of design so then microsoft thought we've got to recover this they brought out the xbox one uh, s to try and improve the performance and they, they changed the form factor to make it look better anything looked better than the xbox one original launch it really was a disaster um, and then of course bringing out the xbox one x to say we are the company of technical performance and power again. Okay, so they're gaining that. But along the way, they've brought in a menu system, which for me is has lost its way in terms of structure, menu, finding stuff, finding indie games, whatever. It's got no flow to it, the menu system. It's 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 awful, the menu system in my eyes. I've never liked it. I, I, the menu system on the Xbox 360 years ago flowed. I knew where everything was, everything worked well. This is very clunky now in terms of how it moves. And in that sense, I feel that the, the communities don't build as well. You know, and I, I think that Sony have come in and they've just picked up the pieces, a more powerful system, a bit of sleek design. But on top of that, they've had y unique game titles available for the system, whereas Microsoft have very few new titles coming out. They, they, they have, you know, constant sequels uh, and the problem is when you have sequels that keep selling whether the sequel game is good or not who cares people buy it we don't need to make those games better and there's a few games that were made that, that disappeared microsoft have really lost their way in terms of the actual uh road to developing new titles but they've had big successes with uh with uh, minecraft and stuff like that they've got an audience there gamer audience but if you look at the overall sales of ps4 next to xbox xbox one as of last week fell into third place behind nintendo switch and that shouldn't happen for a console that's been out since 2013 just shouldn't happen so it shows how far behind they've fallen it shows how they've lost touch with a lot of gamers out there. And, you know, I, I feel that the design ethic of the console is a reflection of we need to remold it to make it sensible and tidy. Fine. Xbox One X for me is dull, but functional. That's fine. But with a new generation, I think we need a new energy and rather than following, let's set the path. Let's show a cool console. Let's make it look like a supercomputer. Let's make it look like a supercomputer. Make it look next gen. Let's do something with a controller. Let's forge it forward. Let's reveal a few games that will blow your socks off. And let's do something new. Let's show you some kind of new technology. Like we've, we'll discuss in a bit. Let's look at VR and how we can work with that as well. New technologies and combine with other elements. I, I think there's... Microsoft have become a reactive company, not a proactive company. And I think that's, a, a, and a lot of that is down to Sony taking risks. You know, Sony aren't yeah. going to come out with a square box. You can bet on that. They're going to come out with something that looks a bit different, a bit quirky, a few blue lights all over it, a new controller, a few new games at launch. The world is going to be talking about it in that sense, in a positive light. Whereas instead, we're looking at 
what, what something that, not that I think it does. It literally looks like the black dustbin. It's that level of design that's gone yeah. into it, i.e., and zero yeah. Re- reactive design, not proactive design in that sense. It's probably going to look at its best in black as well. I mean, if you can imagine this console in bright red, yellow, blue, you know, it's it's probably going to look very garish. So it's probably at its best in black, where it, everything is sort of more, I don't know, looks a bit more subtle, I guess. So, yeah. you know, it's it's a big slab, isn't it? So it's it's very hard to make this look good. So it it's, probably, it's a block. It's, it's a block. It's a at black its best block. now in black. Yeah. So yeah. You I know, mean, you can have it as a white worse. block. You know, if yeah. you look at something white or silver block, whatever, it's just a block. It's got no yeah. contours, no, no design block. elements, no flow to it. Nothing. I mean, so it's. The equivalent for me of the banana stuck to a wall, you know, it's that kind of level of we start with a cube that all the elements fit into. OK, that's practical. We need a CD thing. We need a ventilation. We need to know where the power unit's going to go. We need to know how all the CPU is going to construct inside. Great. Once you've got that, then you move on to the external. What's practical, but then what's not practical? What can we do to create a culture? Xbox 360 thought about the culture and it did create a culture and it was very successful. Now they, they don't seem to know what to do with that. Maybe they'll create some kind of sleeve for it or something that goes on it or something, especially for young mm. kids. Make they're, it look like two Minecraft blocks together. There better be a internal uh, power drive thing in this, you know, like the, the, the box um, having the sort of the brick power thing outside of the main console um was was a terrible decision on the original uh, xbox one so i'm hoping everything is internally you know intact it's all in there it's all been sort of crammed in there and hopefully it does you know the job but you know it, it doesn't really inspire with those visuals it'd be interesting to see the next um you know the, the, the second console that we assume will come to light at some stage but i think it's fair to say that we're not impressed with the overall visual of the console, but I guess we can move on to the the naming convention, something we've we've long sort of moaned about, you know, with the very confusing uh, conventions recently, with you know the Xbox One, the Xbox One S, the Xbox One X, and again yep. they're sticking with the X, aren't they? We have this is called the Xbox Series X, so we could even have like a series of X consoles. Uh, so they're further sort of watering down i guess that their naming convention into these very sort of complex um categories like it, it's just another step in the wrong direction isn't it in terms of naming your console and and making things more complicated than they need to be that the, i don't understand why they keep going down this road it would have been very good if they'd have called it you know something like a, a code name xbox rather than going for this very serious series x tagline which again is in fitting with the sort of serious design if you like a very sort of grown-up uh, appeal and, and the name is certainly suggesting that as well so what do you think of the the name first of all the xbox okay, series so x we're just going through the flow and the reason why i go through history is i go through where we've been and where we're going and where things have gone wrong bumps in the road and again we had this the xbox what the xbox was a great Again, I can't call it Xbox One now because the original the Xbox now, isn't it? Let's call it original Xbox. Mm. Let's call it Xbox. Then we had uh, Xbox 360, which, which was a doesn't huge make thing. any sense, does it? Xbox 360. Um, but I, I have to admit, I quite like the way they just went for something different at the time. It mm. still was quite X360. It was just a catchy tone. But it would be more in fitting with the third console, you'd imagine, wouldn't you? With the, with the three at the front. Uh, uh, rather than the second Xbox to call I it the 360. I think they should have just gone with an ex, a different name altogether. Xbox yeah. something, you know. But what it is is that when they went with Xbox One, mm. it, not only did they know, not know how to design the console, they didn't know how to market it in any way, in any way at all. To call it, it goes Xbox back One. to the TV um, reveal, doesn't it? The TV, 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 E3. It was called the One because it was the all-inclusive box. It did everything in one box. Uh, but they sort of went, they did a 180 on that vision, didn't they? So it made the name obsolete completely within, you know, a year or so of, of it actually launching. So Exactly. And of course, they didn't realise that when it was shortened to X-Bone, they yeah. didn't like that either. Well, um, <laughs> you, you say that. I mean, this new one, Xbox Series X, you could take the S and the E from Series and the X and suddenly you've got something that's even worse. So, yeah. <laughs> I never thought about that. There we go. Um, so there we have it. I mean, there's a lot you, uh, they don't think about that. 
Uh, <laughs> Clearly not. No. People who you know, like we were talking about, expone they, they they should be thinking about all of these and you know the ways in which it can be yeah. misconstrued in that way. And I, I so they they got it all wrong. Mm. Now starting again, I do feel that they've been on a period of recovery and are starting again. I think that's why I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated at the fact that they've got this brand new, you know, next ten years of a console, and it's started off with a bland cube. Yeah. Um, I mean, and, bearing and in mind, this could be the very last console from Microsoft. Could be. Could very be. possible. Very and possible. I think we also have to remember is that anything we say on this podcast, there's a lot of avid Xbox fanboys who mm. whatever Microsoft bring out, they will say it's good. Whatever they bring out. So it, it's very hard to get people with objective opinions and where those opinions come from. Mm. Um so that's that's the thing with with console design. It, some of it is personal, but you see, from my perspective, as I pointed out, my PC, I have no uh, problem with basic designs like that. But if you said to me, "Is it a well-designed game console culturally as a video game system?" No, it's not. It has no culture around it. it has no. It's just a functional item in that sense. So I think in that sense, like you say, it's the last console that Microsoft make, it's a shame that it has no identity. You know, it really is just a corporate box. And I yep. think that's what everybody didn't want from Microsoft. They wanted Microsoft to say, can you do something exciting and different and varied and out there? Mm. And they've reverted back to corporate box. And, that, and that's what we end up with. I mean, some will love the design. Some will call it elegant, sleek. Um, and I can understand that, you know, in certain uh, circumstances, yes, the Xbox will look fantastic um, if you have, you know, a certain arrangement of, of furniture, like you mentioned before, Alan. You know, it, it depends on the room setup you have. If you have a very minimalistic approach to interior design, you're going to love this Xbox probably, you know. But um, it's certainly not going to be, to, you know, to everyone's taste. It's very divisive in that respect. It's it's sort of a Marmite design, isn't it? You're either going to love it or hate it. But going yeah. back to the name, I mean... It's going to be it's, it's it's more brand confusion, isn't it? If you have parents going out uh, looking to buy this for their kids, it's it's going to be a bit of a nightmare, isn't it? You know, is it the Xbox S? Is it the Series X? Is it the X? You know, what is it that I need mm. to buy for my kids? So yeah. it, it just further sort of makes things uh, confusing, and they already were confusing before. The fact that they've stuck with this X letter um, is kind of mind-boggling, really, isn't it? And I guess. They just they seem to be falling into the same traps time and time again. Yeah, I mean it's it's a strange thing. I think that they should have just. I mean, I think Series X is the problem. I think if they just called it you know, Series One, you know, or something like that, even uh, maybe they. I mean, I I assume they've got a. You know, we like we've we don't... PlayStation Four Pro, yeah, and Xbox One X. It's possible that we'll have Series Double X. But we, we're not even sure if, if Series X means a series of consoles, say two or three consoles with the with the X moniker. You know, what, what does Series X mean? Is the box called Series X? Does Series X refer to a number of consoles? So, you know, we may have different names to be revealed yet for these consoles. We just don't know. It's a little bit confusing. But we are expecting two consoles, aren't we, from Microsoft, possibly... Um, like a you know like a, a standard versus a pro playstation you know giving people the choice of extreme power or you know just sort of a a, a regular next gen uh, console and you know something more premium for those that, that want it as well so it's a strange one i guess um i guess we can sort of move on to the controller which i thought was interesting in the sense that although it looks very similar um you know, there are a couple of new functions in there that sort of um, come straight from the uh, premium Xbox uh, Elite Series 2 controller. So basically, it looks like there's only going to be two refinements of the controller compared to the current gen uh, standard Xbox controller, uh, which is a share button, which is lifted straight from the PlayStation 4 controller, if you like, and the D-pad, which comes from the Xbox Elite Series 2 controller. Um, and apparently these are the standard controllers that get bundled in with the 
Series X console. So it's interesting that they're, they're giving you a sort of a sort of premium element to the standard control, which is nice to see. But it does remain to be seen how expensive these controllers are. Mm. Having said that, I mean, we expected something new with the controllers. You know, we, we, we always look forward to seeing new functions. And I guess it's a little bit underwhelming in the sense that yeah, it looks it, the same. I mean, if it's, it's not it's, broke, why fix it? I understand that argument. Again, but again. Um, not exactly you know, they, inspiring. They, it is uninspiring because it's, mm. they're playing it safe. They they're are. They're saying, you yeah. know what? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Let's keep the box. We, what they've been saying is we've been recovering market share with yeah. the Xbox One S and the Xbox one x let's let's keep the console looking in a similar format we're recovering let's keep the controller but improve it slightly let's not rock the boat or try anything new and if they do decide to bring out a new feature then everyone will have to buy new controllers in a couple of years time uh so i, I don't know i i you know I, I mean as i say when i saw the controller i hadn't, hadn't even noticed they had added a, an extra deep d-pad feature on there actually it just looks like the standard controller but in general if you're not using the D-pad very often, you know, is that related to digital D-pad or the actual sticks? Just a digital... Uh, yeah, just a, just the D-pad I mean, itself. Yeah. I mean, you know, like, unless you're doing fighting games, which you have a stick, I mean, you know, it just seems a bit... A gimmick. Big perhaps. deal. Big yeah. deal. You've got a share button. Big deal. Yeah. You've got a new D-pad. Big deal. I mean, it's nothing, is it? So in other words, they've done nothing to controller. So that's that. Um, games uh, what else have we got power power take us on to the power kevin um yeah so i mean it uses the latest uh, it's like a custom made zen 2 uh, cpu apparently it has like 12 teraflops of power oh. but that's not the the yardstick anymore that's a very obsolete sort mm -hmm. of uh, acid test uh so you know gd dr6 sd ram great but I think the real difference is probably going to be the SSD, you know, something that's <laughs> been out for many, many years now, a sort of antiquated technology. But finally, we have it in our consoles. And, and it seems from comments from developers that it's going to be a real game changer. And, you know, they, they tested the Spider-Man game, didn't they, a while back. Uh, the load time was, was um, you know, it was minimal to say the least. And, and that's something that's really plagued current gen games. Loading times have come back with a vengeance. So just to sort of play your PlayStation 4 and Xbox One games on the new generation consoles alone would be a good selling point if you can reduce those load times to a minimum. Yeah. And we understand that the new Series X console has backwards compatibility across all three generations of Xbox, which is mm. fantastic. So it certainly has that going for it. But, um, you know, it'd be interesting to see what, what developers can squeeze out of these games now. Uh, in terms of open world games, you know, many sort of tricks developers use all the time, very much smoke and mirrors going on, shortcuts that they have to do just to get these games running. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see once some of those barriers are lifted, what does it actually mean for our modern games? You know, racing games, open world games, you name it. Developers will be able to take advantage of these SSDs now. So, Yeah, I mean, there's always bottlenecks. So we, yeah. we talk about teraflops now in the same way as we took, used to talk about bits Oh, it's 8-bit, it's 16-bit, it's 32-bit, 64-bit. Look at the 64-bit Atari Jaguar compared to the 32-bit <laughs> PlayStation. Um, but it's got more bits, it's got more bits, it's got, got more to be power. Better. Yeah. Um, now, in terms of teraflops, it's similar in some respects, though in terms of the amount of floppy flops, uh, it would have been nice for it to have been more powerful overall. I think more like 15, 16 would have been yeah, a better Yeah, I think target. what it is, I think because of, I don't believe teraflops matter anymore i think the way technology has advanced the teraflops is obsolete now it's we have to look at other areas like ram yeah. cpu yeah. power and of course those ssds that, well uh, that's the bottleneck you see it, it was for example you know depending on the rendering engine that you're using whether it's rendering an area around you rendering a large map uh, mm. for rendering large maps the ssd will be able to do a lot more i mean they, the yeah. sony used experiment spider-man and that's because it uses large open world environments not only when you're running a large open world environment there's things happening around you traffic on the streets people walking around things happening all that's got to happen as well and sometimes that causes a bit of a stick where it's got to load something or engage something or they just can't do that at all mm. on racing games for example and a majority of you are racers who are listening uh whether you're rendering the whole circuit and you're thinking about rain falling on one part and not on another part and you've got all this going on, it's 
expensive to build all the render technology. This might help take some of the load off developers. This might even help some of the more uh, off off the shelf systems in terms of what they're able to do and process now in terms of you know weather and track temperature and tire wear all the way around the circuit ai so there's a lot that, that the so there's a lot of gameplay options that will become available this generation that aren't currently possible now at least not at a decent frame rate so there's all of that and i, I think that in terms of the power, there's also CPU, which I, now I know Digital Foundry have talked a bit about this on a few games over the years uh, and how the CPU actually hasn't moved forward that much. It was very disappointing in the last gen. That's going to make an almighty difference in, in this console. So like, on the one hand, no, Teraflops uh, isn't everything. Uh, you need a good CPU, good SSD, you know, uh, good sort of video graphics and, and, and uh, what with the ray tracing as well going to play a big part in all this and it's how these elements combine having said that we'll wait and see i was and if you listen to my chats years ago i was very disappointed with this generation of consoles i felt the ps4 pro and xbox one x should have been the original consoles released in 2013 Mm -hmm. so i feel that this time i don't think the console companies are making the same mistake they know they need serious performance especially with esports coming in yeah, and um, you know, obviously we're looking towards VR in the future. VR is something that Microsoft are not embracing right now, but like you said, they've, they've become a reactive company now, Microsoft. So we could well see some sort of VR implementation if it goes well on the Sony side. But we're talking a sort of price point of around five hundred dollars, which we assume will equate to around five hundred pounds. That is a fair amount of money, I would say, and you know, for that money, you'd expect something that's going to be premium, that's going to be a lot more powerful than what we got in the last generation, you know, when compared to, to t- the tech at the time, I guess. So we should get a lot more bang for our buck this time around, I imagine. Um, so I guess that if they both launch for 499, the Sony and Microsoft consoles, um, you know, what's going to separate the two? The games, obviously, are the most important thing, but also it goes back to that design, doesn't it, of the Xbox. If you have equal price consoles and and the playstation if it looks amazing versus this very bland xbox i can imagine a lot of people opting for the playstation you know it's you you, you buy stuff that you're attracted to and it's the games it's all about the games yeah. i mean right now i mean for example you know we've heard a bit about forza motorsport 8 uh, recently and some of the new elements they're going to be working on with that uh you know i mean you know it, i expect a good showing overall. From Xbox, you know, mm. they've got 15 mm. uh, game studios. You know, they've got stuff lined up, and they need it because they need to respond mm. to to last gen, which was uh, very underwhelming. You know, a lot of IPs they had went away, unfortunately, yeah. um, and they're going to have to be strong. You know, we're expecting the PS5 some sort of reveal rumored in February next year. Yep. So, who knows what they're going to show? I mean, I'm hoping to see what it looks like. I'm hoping to see possibly a price point, but who knows? But I, I imagine Microsoft will respond to that pretty sharpish perhaps slightly before maybe slightly after because it is sort of tick for tack now they're really going to have to we've got we've got two things coming up with this generation between these two consoles now uh, and this is where sony and microsoft are side but neck and neck really you've got power and performance i think yeah. it'd be quite similar between yeah. the two consoles i don't think there's going to be a big difference no, at no. all game developers don't want a big difference the game no. companies don't want a big difference that's one one of them might be marginally better than the other but it won't make much difference to most most yeah, games. Agreed. Yeah. Um, both are going to have backward compatibility with their previous consoles. Apparently, yeah. PlayStation will as well. Hopefully, mm. that will apply to all accessories and steering wheels. Well, yeah, hopefully. We don't know the extent of the PlayStation backwards compatibility. No. Um, so it might be underwhelming. You know, it might they might be drip feeding games uh, just like Xbox did with the uh, 360 games. We just don't know. I mean, we're expecting know. a lot of people are expecting the full. PS4 catalog to be backwards compatible. I think it will be. Yeah, I'm. I'm. But I'm personally. I'm. I wouldn't hold my breath on that. That's the thing. I, 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 I am. I know. I, I'm certain that they will. I think the PS4 catalog will be entirely compatible. I think a lot of the games will be upgradable on PS4, five, and but Xbox. Who's going to pay for these upgrades? You know, it's this investment. Uh, uh, there is, I think, I find a lot of the games companies invest in them themselves. Whatever they were doing when they went from Xbox s to uh one x or from ps4 to ps4 pro mm. uh, certainly uh, sony themselves and some of the bigger companies will invest in options like that for all yeah. we know 
they've been telling developers to put this sort of compatibility in their games for the last two or three years since the Pro came out. So it's likely that a lot of games made in the more recent times will have that functionality oh, yeah, in I there expect. and yeah. that op- option in there. So I think you'll see a lot of games running on your, your PS4 games running better. I hope uh, and so. Then, yeah. and so, you've got, so what have you got? You've got two great consoles, both with backward compatibility. Uh, I think the next step then is going to be unique design elements. So the, the PlayStation will have the new controller, uh, tactile controller feel to it. That's going to be interesting. That means unique gameplay. Uh, they're going to have a PS, the, the v, PSVR is already compatible. They've already sold two and a half million PSVR units. That's not bad, actually, in the scheme of things. So there's a market for that. It takes a couple of killer apps and suddenly VR is out there. And with with VR... What's held that back is the PlayStation 4 has been underpowered. It just couldn't power VR properly. But you imagine day one, and they said, right, Gran Turismo Sport is going to be compatible with PSVR, and it's going to run in a maximum resolution, maximum detail. It's going to blow your socks off. You know, people yeah. are going to be, you're going to get a million people go out and buy a PSVR. So I think that that, that market will grow, and then Sony will already have a lead on that market when the time comes, yeah. and they'll already have tech that they've been developing themselves, ready for a new VR headset in the future. So in terms of unique peripherals, Sony are ahead there. And the next thing really is in terms of design of the console and all that sort of thing, I think they're going to be creatively forging new new areas there. And also I think in terms of uh, 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 software, if we talk about software, Halo, Gears of War, Forza Motorsport, Yawn. I love, I love them, but at the same time, I feel like we need something new. Right? We need new, new, exciting titles that really take yeah. us forward from Microsoft. I've got a lot more faith in in this generation from Microsoft than the last. Mm. Um, they did show um, Hellblade Two, the trailer. As far as I know, that was the only thing they showed that was supposedly running on the Series X Xbox. Um, yes. But it was a, a CGI trailer. Like it was just, oh well, it was in game, but it was it was just a trailer. It wasn't uh, a gameplay. You know, it was nothing playable. So we're still yet to see gameplay at that real sort of drop the drop the draw moment. You know, we haven't seen that yet. But uh, next year, of course, we will see that. But yeah, like you say, it's all going to be about the games. But like I say, I've got, I've got a lot more faith in Microsoft this time because they have to come back. It's you know they they really have to. They have no other choice. They've acquired certain studios recently. Uh, which bodes well for the future of Xbox. But, uh, yeah, they're going to have to come back with a strong showing. And really from the off, you know, it's about which launch lineup is going to be the most attractive uh, to get those early adopters in, you know. So Mm. because we know the PlayStation VR 2 won't launch alongside the console. We may have to wait a year or two. Uh, So it's all about that launch lineup, really. Who has the best launch lineup? That's going to be fascinating to see next year as we have more and more games revealed uh, there was a PS5 game that was revealed as well, but again, it was just like a trailer, no gameplay. It was very shiny, I would say, almost as shiny as the Gran Turismo 2000 uh, demo, I guess you could say, uh, that they showed um, many years ago. It almost reminded mm. me of that, very, very shiny. It's just a way to showcase the technology, you know. But Yeah, um, I mean, again, you know, again, games, I... I... Because we've had so many bull shots over the years, as we used yeah. to call them, we we just we, can't. We're not take excited any... no, by trailers. No, no. no it's no, gameplay no. Tra- that trailers we do want nothing to see. for me. I mean, yeah, there's lots yeah. of elements in the PlayStation trailer, and sorry, in the Xbox trailer that you say, "Oh, it's it's exciting." I'm excited. I am excited. I'm excited. I'm not. Ex- what, what's got with the Xbox? I'm disappointed with the look of the Xbox. I'm disappointed with the road they've gone down in terms of design. Uh, it, i.e. no design they've gone with minimalist <laughs> zero design there's literally nothing on there other than functionality there's nothing yep. there a yep. green yep. light at the top that you're never going to see mm-hmm. so in that sense and a controller that looks the same and i always felt controller is a big part of it It'd been nice to have just been brave with the controller and so i'm not making any major changes just just change the look and feel change the feel of it in some way you know um i don't mean changing the shape the, the the buttons anything just something you know change the color of it whatever put a, put a screen on it or something i don't know do something with it let's move tech forward um uh, and then really it's like you say it just comes down to the games mm-hmm. uh what are we going to have I mean, I mean how many new games are we going to have how exciting are they going to be uh, how are they going to use the hardware? Uh, you know, likely you'll see games like, say, Forza Horizon get a 4K 60 frames per second upgrade, for example. 
1080p six, oh, sorry 4k 60 yeah uh and you'll see all the games that have 4k 30 move to 4k 60 yeah that's the real benchmark isn't it 4k 60 with, with all that all titles and well, hopefully even what... the mid-tier developers and small developers can hit that yes you know, because that's the real benchmark you know in, particularly in the, 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 the racing genre we want a minimum of 60 frames even if it's not quite 4k I think we're, we're more happy to take the hit on the resolution rather than the frame rate, you know. So it needs to be 60 frames across the board, no yeah. excuses, done. Yeah, I, I still the think the console is a little underpowered for all that, but we'll wait and see. I still think it could have done with a bit more performance. Really? Wait and see. Oh, wow. I do. Okay. Because 4K takes up oh, so yeah. much performance yeah. but, that you, you know, might end up with 4K games yeah. that don't look much better than we've already got because yeah. all of that extra power is simply going to from 1080p to 4K. And the preference and so is always going to be resolution, isn't it? And to, to, yeah. to, to actually sell your games. It's graphics are, are what sells games, unfortunately. Yeah. So you're going like to end up with a game, a 10, running a current game that's yeah. 1080p in 4K at 60 yeah. requires enormous amount of power. You're basically using all of that power just to mm. get the resolution up. Yeah. And so then you have very little extra to actually make the graphics look better. So that's why they're going to be looking at fangled, dangled effects uh, in terms of lighting and other tricks to try and make it work with the rendering in different ways and the, the ray tracing. So, mm. yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. Games are going to look fab and they're going to run better. Um, I, I just wonder, you know, I think this is the 4K generation for sure. Yeah. It's just, I wonder how much first party will still blow your socks off. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, but, but, it's, yeah, it's the smaller developers, I guess, we yeah. have a slight reservation. Will they hit 4K 60? That remains to be seen. I understand, you know, what you're saying because I do have a slight um, fear there as well myself. But, uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully they can hit 4K 60. And even if they have to take a little hit on, on the resolution, we're, we're fine with that. You know, just give us our 60 frames. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We just want 60 frames. That's all I care about. Check a board and 60 frames. Yeah. I'm a winner. Yeah. So, no, I, I think uh, at the moment, Microsoft have, you know, they, they've been a bit uninspiring in the recent years. And I, I feel that they're, they're resting too much on their older titles and their older brands a bit too much. And they need a few new IPs mm. and they need to kick it off. Obviously, Forza Motorsport 8 is going to be one of the launch titles. Uh, oh, yeah. And all the major that. brands, Halo. And, and and I, um, yeah, Halo, Gears, it'll all be back. But I think Halo and Forza are going to be two of the key day one releases. Mm. Um, I am i don't know if Turn 10 have what it takes to take it forward. I think they've fallen a long way behind Gran Turismo this gen. Well, I don't think it. I know it. I was playing Forza the other day, Forza 7, and you're racing around Silverstone and the gradients are not correct. The track doesn't look right. The communication's not there to the wheel. The physics are not right at all. And it used to be all about the physics on Forza. Oh, yeah. I mean, Forza's yeah. right up to Forza 2, 3, and 4. 4 was tremendous. And they would lost their way this gen and they really need to rediscover their way. And I think with eSports getting more, you know, getting bigger now in terms of investment, I think they really need to bring that franchise back yeah. on course so that's pretty important for them but no i'll be keeping a, a close eye on it for sure obviously we'll be talking about every element uh, of the xbox any other key aspects you'd like to cover kevin before we round up uh, i think we've, we've pretty much covered everything you know it's just a, a little word on, on the forza game it's supposedly they're going for a more of a motorsport vibe so we are expecting hopefully something a little bit more realistic in terms of the physics um, and as you say they need to sort of um, catch up with the competitors now so hopefully Forza will come back strong and, and sort of take cues from the earlier games you know which which was very simulation oriented going from Gran Turismo to, to Forza it really blew my mind how how in depth that physics model was in Forza so hopefully they can return to their roots they know how to do it you know they've just got to sort of go back to what it was and I'm, I'm, I'm sort of optimistic for the future of, of motorsport so Hopefully they can, they can come back strong with an awesome looking like launch title as well. But uh, I think we've pretty much covered everything so far. Um, you know, considering there's very little to go on at the moment. So it's all sort of hearsay, really. But, you know, it'd be interesting to see what they reveal in the new year, how the rivals develop between the two consoles. Um, what is the PlayStation going to look like? Are we going to get a second Xbox console? What's it going to look like? How powerful will it be compared to the one that's been revealed? Uh, price points are we looking at 500 pounds for each 
Um, will one undercut the other by 50 pounds? You know, it could make all the difference because price is, is the most important factor when you're buying a console. So, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see how things develop. And I'm very much looking forward to PlayStation VR 2 in the future as well. So I'm very excited for this generation. It could be the last console generation as well, which sort of has a bittersweet feel to it. But um, looking forward to next year. I'm looking forward to seeing the launch lineup of titles now and, and getting excited about games. Uh, you know, the new generation always sort of brings about that excitement. Uh, although so far, a little bit underwhelmed with, with Microsoft's showing so far. But hopefully they'll come back strong with the games and make up some ground against PlayStation. Absolutely. So it's all to play for, and it's yeah, yeah, it is an exciting time. I'm just looking forward to PlayStation reveal. I think next year, and and then I think we're going to have a massive E3 when uh, these these oh, yes. companies reveal all their big <laughs> new products. They're going to give you a reason to to buy these systems, and they're going to blow our socks off with new graphics and demos and tech that's coming in the future. Exciting! It's always exciting when there's new new tech uh, and i just uh, for me i'm excited when i see something new so i think in that sense of from where microsoft's concerned a bit flat after seeing the actual console it, it, you know in the controller it just doesn't hasn't done it for me yet microsoft now need to impress me with the the games and the product and the functionality and i'm sure they will but um that's it for now uh, just to finish off today viewers if you haven't seen it do jump on the forum uh, design a car design a car livery contest we've got to where you can win one of the quarter arcades arcade machines uh, this applies to anywhere in the world uh, so we can ship more they will ship worldwide to the winner so uh, do get on there design a few cars i mean you you there's you know you have a chance of, of winning there's five runners up prizes as well uh, so do get stuck in say hello on the forum uh, myself and kevin are always on there uh, and no doubt we'll get some feedback from you on there about this xbox video as well and we'll get lots of uh, xbox fanboys probably having a moan at me but there you go it's one of those things uh, and uh, that's it from us for now as ever more soon Hello, beautiful. Thanks for watching the video today. Hope you enjoyed it. Do like and subscribe. Supports what we do. And also check in the description if you want to become a YouTube member or a Patreon. Support us in every way possible to get out there and get some awesome content. But um, that's it. Hope you've enjoyed it. Check out these videos. Check out the site. And there'll be more from me very soon.